Welcome to Haxby Shed and the Welding Rotator Part 5. Morning folks. Anti-spatter spray. Been meaning to get some for years. Finally got round to it. Mainly because of this chug. Trying to keep it nice and tidy. Thanks for your comments. I don't know if this video seems a bit disjointed to you now. It certainly is to me because I only seem to get like an hour at a time working on this and something crops up. Yesterday uh, one of my daughters had a baby, another one. Um, we've got enough grandchildren for a football team now. Gets expensive at Christmas. So a bit of drama. Um, she lives about 20 miles away from the hospital. They got there with 10 minutes to spare. It was literally out of the car, into a room baby was born and in fact it had been closed to admissions because of I think lack of staff, staff lack of beds and it only opened for new admissions in the maternity ward half an hour before they arrived and then today um, what are we now half past ten in the morning trying to get this finished and another message oh another daughter clutch has gone on the car just a fluid leak I think so my son's in touch. Could I help him this afternoon sort that out? I'm just using a 14mm drill to centre this in the chuck. The batteries have gone on my mag light, so that'll be another odd job to change and replace those. I'll just take this in 6mm at the edge to start with, so I've got something to work to. Only half mil cuts, there's no prizes for pulling it out of the chuck. I took five off. I've chamfered the inside and the out, and now we can drill it for that gas barb. That should press in okay. I'm looking at getting one of those Bullfinch LPG torches. They got very good reviews. They're a bit expensive but uh, now that my family are not buying me the welding rotator for Christmas they can perhaps buy me one of those. That'll do. Right. Everything is now made. All that remains is for me to clean it up. I'll take it to the house to warm things up so that the glues and silicon work, you know, to their best. And put the whole thing together now. Then we'll come back and we'll connect it up to the inverter and then you can see it spin. I'm just making a sleeve to go on here. So I've cut a piece of 8mm central heating pipe, microbore. I'll drill that out to 6.5 on the lathe, slip it over there, try and solder it. I've discovered that the insulation on this flexible cable is not flame proof. So I'll shield it as best I can and we'll see what happens. Even with that blow lamp I could only just get enough heat into that cable because the copper was drawing so much heat away. It's actually soldered down to about here. I 
I'm going to put a P-clip on here to hold this earth cable well away from everything to protect it. Right, about a week later, I had a bit of a delay anyway because I had to buy this cable here, power cable, so that took a few days to come. But more importantly, I assembled all of this with the super glue and the silicon sealant, so this all round here was all airtight. And I connected a pipe at the back here where the inlet is, blew into it, and not very much was coming out of here. But some was coming out round here. Now, around this area here, around this. So, had to take it apart again. That's all part of debugging things, isn't it? And what I discovered is this hole here, and let me try and get this off now. There we go, there. That hole there was blocked by that ledge here. Only a little bit was um, showing. Look at this blood. How do I cut myself so easily? I've been in here five minutes. Mm. Anyway, so I, cut, I drilled a hole through there. So it's cross hole drilled now. So that means this will have a proper flow. But I still was concerned that air was going to leak round the sides of this here. So what I did was I ordered an O-ring, 58 millimeters, which just goes on there, just over that ledge, over that edge. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to machine a small recess in here to take that O-ring. And then hopefully that will provide a gas tight seal. This runs out by about 0.1 of a mil or 4,000. So that will be near enough for this job. I've set the tool over at an angle like that so that the V that I cut internally there is equal like that. I've touched off on this face already. This is six millimeters thick. So I'm gonna move in by three. Like that. I'll set this going, wind out till I touch off inside. And then I will cut to a depth of probably a millimeter or a millimeter and a quarter. Then I can put the seal in and trial fit it. To get it right, I'm having to just machine a little bit, try the ring in, try this in. I think we're almost there. I'll just put a bit of silicon grease onto it and we'll see if we can get this in. We're done, I think. Let's try. It's quite stiff to get in. Come on. Nah. It's just been a little bit awkward. There we are. It's in. It's a fraction tighter than I would like, but you know, I don't want to have to set it up again in the lathe. That uh, O-ring will ease off a bit anyway. It's not like the motor's not strong enough to turn it, is it? As long as I put some silicon grease on it, it'll be fine. So that'll give us our airtight seal there. All back together now. I can blow down this tube. You can see this tube going into the water. Now the question is, can I get a vacuum just out of interest? See if any water comes up that pipe. There we are. Don't want it to go into here, obviously. Yep. Yeah. Good. So the next thing to do is to fit this cable, set it up with the chuck on, and I might even try some welding. Well, a few days later and a couple of hours of work, just trying this out in various ways. I've got it connected to the inverter. I've had the chuck on and everything. I've had it spinning at between 18 RPM, which is 50 Hertz speed, down to one RPM. But something I've noticed is there's quite a bit of drag in this motor lock. This reduction between this shaft and this shaft is about 75 to one. So I imagine this would be quite easy to turn. Um, what I'm finding is I can stall the motor at low speeds, a bit more than you would expect. So one thought on my mind was um, this O-ring in here is a bit too tight on this carrier that goes on there. 
So I'm going to machine that in a moment. I'll show you on the lathe uh, just to make it not so tight because it really was quite tight against this O-ring here. But I am still puzzled why there's so much drag in this. Now, you know, it could be preload on the various shafts. I don't think there's anything wrong with the bearings. The oil in here is pretty thick and I'll have a look into that as well. So I'll just show you it spinning now with the inverter. That's turning about 2 RPM. I'll just turn it up to full speed now. So I'm just going to take a fraction off this here so that it's um, looser against this seal. I can't believe this would be causing the motor too much trouble but I've put so much work into this I may as well get it right. I've taken about 0.4 of a mil off this diameter and it just nicely eases on and there's very little drag compared to what there was because it really was quite tight. It stays in look but it turns easily now. I want to have a look at the oil in the gearbox. Let's have a look at this. Oops. Right. Well there isn't very much oil in there actually and it's quite sticky. So what I'm going to do is flush that out and I'm just going to use white spirit for that. I don't want to use brake cleaner because I don't know what's in here. If there's any plastic parts it could melt them. And then I've got some of this uh, Max Gear Royal Purple Oil. Now it's a bit light really. There's a panel on the side here and it says that this should be ISO 460 which is about EP140 and this is only 7590 but for this it'll be fine and we can see if we can improve this because there really is a bit too much drag there the whole gearbox only takes 0.1 of a litre this tube holds 0.1 litres up to the top of this tape here I used to use it for dosing two-stroke motorbikes take that out first We'll get this back together again. That's certainly easier to get on now that I've relieved this where the seal is. and then let that silicon go off now for a few hours.